Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part eight of my design patterns video tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the builder pattern. And like most of the other tutorials, this is 100% self contained. So, if you're just here to see the builder pattern, you're going to learn everything about it in this one video. However, if you want to see all the other patterns, refer to the link up above, and you can check those out as well as brushing up on basic OOP principles. So, what is the builder pattern? Well, this is a pattern that's used to create objects made from a bunch of other objects. And when you want the creation of these parts to be independent of the main object, and also to hide the creation of the parts from the client so both are not dependent upon each other. Whenever you create a builder pattern, the builder part of the builder pattern knows all the specifics and every other class involved knows nothing about what's going on in regards to the specifics of the final object you're going to create. Sounds way more complicated than it is, and now you're going to see how simple it is. Here is the builder pattern. Basically, I'm using my old alien here, and in this situation, he is going to request a robot to be built for him. Here is the interface, which we're going to call Robot Builder, and it's going to find what every robot has, which means a method that builds a robot head, torso, arms, and legs, as well as receives the robot. Then, of course, you're going to implement this interface over here with the old robot builder is what I'm going to call it. And then you just need to implement all those methods. And what this guy does is it's going to set all the specifics for making a very specific robot type. And here is the final robot. And it's going to have a whole bunch of fields. This guy up here is going to set the values for those fields whenever build robot heads called and build robot torso and so forth and so on. And of course, get robots going to return this robot to whoever calls it, mainly this little alien over here. Then we're going to have the robot engineer or what is often called the director and what it does is it creates a robot with the field set by the builder this guy up here and then finally we have our interface which is going to have all our set methods to set all the values for our robot and then the final robot itself so now we're going to go from this basic little diagram here to build all of the code so on with the code so here we are inside of Eclipse, and the first thing we're going to do is come to Robot Plan, which is going to be the interface for creating all of our robots. And this is real simple. We're just going to, just like always, define all the methods that need to be set up. So we're going to say that we want our robot to have a head, and it's going to be passed a string, and we're just going to call that head. So real simple. And then we're also going to define our torso, our arms, and our legs. And then this is going to be passed torso arms, and legs. So here you're going to define all the qualities that you want all of your robots to have. And then after that, you're going to go to robot.java, and you're going to implement the robot plan, which you just created. And if we come up here, we're going to just put our mouse over robot, and it's going to say add unimplemented methods. We're going to do that. And there we go. And this is going to act as the concrete robot class based off of the interface that we just saw right there. So what are we going to need to do? Well, we're going to need to actually create these fields for ourselves. So they're all going to be private, of course. String, robot head, robot torso, arms, and legs. And then what we need to do is just come in here and go robot head is equal to whatever the value of head is, robot torso, and make sure that we put this as uppercase, of course, is equal to whatever torso was when it was sent over. Robot arms is equal to whatever the value of arms was. And robot legs is going to be whatever the value of legs was. And there you go. Got that all set up. Now the only other thing we're going to want to do here is put some get methods inside. Most of the time whenever you have set methods, you're also going to have get methods. So we're going to go public, string, and all of the code that is here is available underneath the video. You should get it. If you really want to learn this stuff, it's free. Why not? Okay, return, robot head, real simple. And then we're just going to also do the get methods for the torso, torso, arms, and arms and legs. And there you go. That is all we're going to do with robot.java. So now we need to come in here to robotbuilder.java, which is going to be the interface for building all of the different types of robots we want to use. So what sort of things are we going to want this guy to do? Public void. Well, we're going to want to build our robot head, of course. And using interfaces just makes everything so simple. You don't have these long classes. Everything is going to be real easy to implement. And you don't have to think that much. I'm going to make that uppercase, and this is going to be torso, arms, legs. And there you go. That's all it took to create the basic interface for robotbuilder.java. 
Now we're going to create old robot builder. And this is where you're going to see all the changes because this is going to be the concrete builder class that's going to assemble all the parts for the finished robot object. So we're going to have to go private robot because this is going to be building a robot. So we're going to need access to an actual robot object. And then there's no use typing all that out because we can just put our mouse over this guy, of course, and go add unimplemented methods. And there you go, We've got our stuff automatically thrown inside of there. And now since we have robot defined up inside of here in a compositional type of way where the field is actually an object, a la the strategy pattern sort of kind of, we're going to come in here and define this robot, which is a reference to this robot up here, right there, is equal to new robot. So now we have that guy all set up and this is the constructor, of course. So we know that this robot is going to be created whenever this guy is called. So that's good. And then what we need to do is just go robot dot set robot head and since this is an old robot let's say his head is made out of tin just to do something and you see all i'm doing is calling all the methods that were defined inside of the robot class so set robot torso and this is going to be tin torso arms what would be an old school type of arm for this guy to have how about a blowtorch blowtorch arms and then we come down to robot legs and what would be an old school type of robot leg? How about roller skates? So this is a roller skate and robot with blowtorch arms made out of tin. And there you go. There's the old robot builder.java. And every single time you want to define a new type of robot, you're just going to create a new builder object that's based off of the main robot builder interface, which we just created. And everything's just going to work. So now we come to the robot engineer, which is what I call it. A lot of people call it a director, but I just have always called it an engineer, so that's what I call it. And what this guy is going to do is create a robot using the builder interface that is defined right here with old robot builder in this situation. So what are we going to do? We're going to go private robot builder. Robot builder is going to be its name. And then we're going to call robot engineer, which is going to be the constructor, and it's going to be passed a robot builder specific object which is going to be our old style robot type here and then once again we're just going to go this robot builder you can think of it as kind of like a factory type right like that so we know now we have a robot builder or we have a factory for building ro robots and this guy back here has robots inside of it so you can think of it this way that this guy defines this factory type don't call it a factory but you know if it makes you understand this better you can think of it that way so we're defining the robot builder factory area. And over here, we're defining the robot itself inside of old robot builder. So that's how we're able to backtrack and actually create these guys. So what do we need to do with this? Well, we're going to have to provide the option for get robot so that they'll be able to get the robot that is created inside of here by the engineer. And to do that, we're just going to go return this robot builder get robot and to do that, we're going to have to go over here to robotbuilder.java and just go public robot get robot so that it'll be able to return that. And then bounce over to this guy right here, which is the old robotbuilder.java, which implements the robot builder itself. And then, of course, come in here and implement get robot. There you go. And what's it going to return? It's going to return this robot, which this builder knows how to create. So pretty simple. Uh, bounce back over into Robot Engineer. And then what the Robot Engineer is going to do is execute the methods that are going to be specific to the Robot Builder. So to do that, we're just going to go public, avoid, make robot, like that. And then we're going to say this, Robot Builder, we want to call the build robot head method, right like that, which of course is right here, build robot head. And what's it going to do? It's going to set the value to tin head forehead inside of robot, which is back over here. And you can see right there, there's robot head. So that's exactly what it's doing. So bounce back over here. So what do we need to do now? We just need to set all the other values for the torso and the arms and the legs. And that's it. So if I'll save that, and then we're going to go into test robot builder and we're going to check to make sure we did all this right. So what are we going to need to do if we want to build ourselves a robot? Well, we're going to need to get ourselves a robot builder object, obviously. And I'm just going to call it old style robot. And then it's going to be of type old robot builder. So you could think of it saying, as if you're saying, OK, I want to get myself a robot builder to build me a robot. And this is the class 
blueprint that I want you to use to create that robot. And then what we're going to need to do is pass the old robot builder specification to the engineer. So if we want to pass something to the engineer, well, we're going to have to actually create the engineer. And I need to spell engineer right. And there we are. So we define that we want to get ourselves a robot builder. We want it to use the blueprint defined in old robot builder. And then we need to get ourselves an engineer to build it. And this is going to be equal to new robot engineer. And we need to pass over the specs that we created right here or the blueprint for what type of robot to create. And there we are, we did that. And then we need to tell the engineer to make the robot using the specifications of the old robot builder class. So we're gonna go robot engineer, put a dot there, and then what's it gonna say as our options? Well, one of our options is make obot. Well, that's definitely not gonna be the right thing. We'll click on it. What did that tell us? That told us that we need to change that to robot, make robot and then jump over here into Robot Engineer and change this to make robot. There we are. Nice way to catch our little errors we've made there. And then the engineer is gonna return the right robot based off of the spec that we passed it right here. Now we got ourselves a robot. So we're gonna go robot first. Robot is what it's gonna be called. And it's gonna be equal to the object that is gonna be returned whenever get robot is sent to the engineer. So just to re-go over all this stuff, basically we're defining a robot builder right here, and this can be thought of as a blueprint for creating a very specific type of robot. And if we want a robot to be built for us, what do we need? We need an engineer to build that robot for us. And to be able to build that robot, the engineer is gonna need the blueprint, which we defined up here, passed over to it. Once it gets the blueprint, the engineer being smart like he is, can make ourselves a nice little robot. And then we're gonna be actually able to define the actual robot and just call robot, get robot from the robot engineer, and it's gonna pass it over. And the robot will be defined and ready for us to work with. So pretty cool, especially because nothing knows what's going on except for this guy up here, the robot builder. So let's check to make sure that we actually did this right. And we can say proudly that our robot was built and then we need to see if our robot was built right. So we can say something like robot head type like that. And then we just need to go first robot, the object we created, and then say, hey, what is your robot head look like? And it's going to tell us. And we can just copy that, paste that inside of there. And then we can just change this to torso, get robot torso, arm type, first robot, get robot arms. If you use nice naming conventions, you don't even have to think. You can just like do this out of your head, which is great. And get robot legs. And if we file save that, we can see what type of awesome robot we created there in a very structured manner. And there you go. Robot built, robot head type, tin head, tin torso, blowtorch arms, roller skates. Able to put all that together with really only one part of this whole entire builder pattern. Knowing any specifics about the total robots that's going to be created, everybody else is left in the dark and us does their jobs. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.